As a companion to Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of Frank Herbert's Dune, I've been exploring the characters, worlds, and elements that make up this iconic series. One of the primary elements of the Dune saga is the drug known as Spice Melange, which is only found on the planet Arrakis. In this universe set some 20,000 years into mankind's future, and devoid of any artificial intelligence or thinking machines, this substance and its effects have been fundamental in transforming mankind and its infrastructure in order to ensure their continued advancement. Through use, the spice is known to grant humans a longer lifespan, greater vitality, and heightened awareness. Depending on the dosage and the user's physiology, this narcotic can even unlock prescience, which in Dune is referred to as the ability to expand an individual's consciousness in order to see into the past, present, and future. This prescience serves as a frequently used plot device throughout the Dune saga, and in this video I'd like to talk about what prescience is and how it works in this universe. While many awareness spectrum narcotics are available throughout the Imperium, the Spice Melange is the most widely known and perhaps the most powerful in the known universe. Spice possesses intense psychotropic effects and is used by certain groups to initiate clairvoyant and precognitive trances, access genetic memory, and heighten other abilities. At the time of Frank Herbert's first book, Melange has become an essential part of commerce and technological development. It has also become vital for space travel, as it enables the Spacey Guild navigators to see into the immediate present and future, so that they can plot a safe path for Highliners when traveling through space. The degree to which a being could use spice in order to unlock prescience is varied. In order to achieve the prescience needed to become a Guild navigator, one would have to be continually immersed in spice for so long that it would mutate their entire body a process which comes at great cost as it makes such beings entirely dependent on others for a continual supply of this highly addictive substance. Another group which has relied on the prescient powers of Melange is the Sisterhood of the Bene Gesserit. Instead of using this drug to see into the future, their focus is on using Spice to see into the past by unlocking their ancestral genetic memories. By undergoing a ritual known as the Spice Agony, certain adept members of the Bene Gesserit would be able to access, confront, and unlock their ancestral genetic memories. In order to gain mastery over this prescient knowledge, a lethal concentrated dose of spice, known as the Water of Life, is consumed. Through their intense training which allowed them supreme control over their bodies, they would be able to transform this poison into a benign substance. They would then have to overcome the physiological mayhem that resulted from the prescient knowledge attained through accessing this other memory. After successfully surviving the Spice Agony ritual, a member of the Sisterhood would rise to the rank of Reverend Mother, possessing the genetic memories of all her female ancestors. Due to the religious engineering that had been performed by the Bene Gesserit thousands of years in the past, the native Fremen population on Arrakis also had their own form of Reverend Mothers, who would undergo the same ritual in order to achieve such prescience. An interesting theory is that because female humans carry two X chromosomes, they are prevented from accessing the memories of their male ancestors who possess an X and Y chromosome. The Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim highlights this limitation in her conversation with Paul Atreides. When referencing the idea that a member of the Sisterhood could attempt to access her male ancestor's memories, she says, quote, We are repelled by it, terrorized. It is said a man will come one day and find in the gift of the drug his inward eye. He will look where we cannot, into both feminine and masculine paths. The man that the Reverend Mother refers to here is known by the Bene Gesserit as the Kwisatz Haderach, a being who would be capable of accessing genetic memories stored within both chromosomes. This is not to say that memories from male ancestors are not still accessible to females through genetic memory. However, due to the lack of the Y chromosome, these memories are incomplete. Accessing these masculine memories is impossible for the Bene Gesserit, and as the Reverend Mother brings out, the very thought of trying is terrifying to them. 
Members of the Sisterhood and others who were exposed to Melange were also said to experience a limited form of clairvoyance, though this was mostly confined to thoughts, feelings, and images of the near future. The Bene Gesserit's Kwisatz Haderach, however, would not only be able to possess the genetic other memory on both the male and female side, but would also be able to accurately predict the future to a much greater degree than other prescient beings. In the Book of Dune, Paul exhibits prescience even before he is exposed to Spice, dreaming of Chani, the Fremen girl he would eventually meet on Arrakis, as well as other unsettling visions of the future. In a way, it can be said that the universe of Dune begins with the assumption that even without the Spice Melange, humans are generally prescient, though to a very limited degree. The Spice, however, acts as a catalyst of sorts to amplify and open the door to greater clairvoyance. While prescience is certainly a driving factor in many of the storylines of Frank Herbert's saga, this ability does have its limitations. For instance, when multiple prescient beings are involved, they serve as a sort of blind spot to each other. While Paul Atreides can see many possible futures, he realizes that House Carino's agent and failed Kwisatz Haderach, Count Hasimir Fenring, is invisible to his prescient sight. Guild navigators are also invisible to Paul's prescience, which would allow them to conspire against him without his knowledge. Eventually, the ability to avoid prescient sight was achieved through advancements in Rechessian technology in the form of a spacefaring vehicle called a no-ship. The use of these ships became instrumental in the activities of those who wished to avoid detection from beings with prescience. Throughout the saga, it is hinted by characters who possess significant levels of prescience that the ability to see the future locks you into that future. However, it seems that they felt locked into it because all of the alternative possible futures were worse. So it's safe to say that fate, or the concept of predestination, doesn't truly exist in this universe, and ultimately the future is not preset as humanity still has free will. So while a being with superior prescience may indicate that they are locked into a certain future, it effectively means that all other futures lead to worse outcomes. And because a being as powerful as the Kwisatz Haderach would be able to wield control over the infrastructure and manipulate the systems employed by humanity, they themselves would need to effect change in order to ensure the avoidance of any catastrophic ends. There is certainly a heavy weight of responsibility that comes with such powerful prescience. Any characters that wield such foresight are forced to grapple with the idea of throwing mankind into a terrible future in order to ensure its survival. This future is referred to as the Golden Path, and the prescient beings which foresee it and affect the change needed to ensure it take center stage as the story of Frank Herbert's series unfolds. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. And let me know what you think of the idea of prescience in the Dune saga. Do you feel that the idea of such foresight moves the story away from science fiction and closer to the realm of fantasy? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.